Hello, happy May everyone. Welcome to Be Ash and Clutch Knitting and Crochet. So, um, I know that I posted the how to um, tutorial on the Eyelet Yoke sweater, and I wanted to show it to you in a uh, process. So, this is it done. Well, it's not done, it's <laughs> this is it before I put it together. Okay, so everything I said to do in part one and part two. Uh, you do that, and then I wanted to just quickly tell you how to put it together. After you bind off, you have to work, put everything back on the the hook, the right front, the sleeve, the the right front, the sleeve, and the back, the left front, the sleeve, the right front, the sleeve, the back, the left front, and le the sleeve and the left front. Let me say that again. I'm not going to edit myself. That's why this is called Biash and Klutz Knitting and Crochet because I am going to bitch and klutz my way through this. Okay, so after you put <laughs> the right front <laughs> with the right side facing you back on your needle, the sleeve, the back, the sleeve, and the left front all facing you with the right side facing you. You're going to go ahead and um, do a decrease row and then continue on with the stockinette row. If you're doing the one for three and four years old, you're going to do two sets of stockinette, two revolutions, knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row. Then you're going to do a action row where uh, this row will be repeated over and over again in a set of four different times. You're going to knit two together and yarn over. And that's what I showed you in the little swatch that I did, all the stitches that creates all these eyelets. So let me see if I can show you better what it looks like here. This is the yoke, and those are the eyelets. And they don't look as, um, they're not going to be as pronounced right now because it's not blocked yet. But when this gets blocked, you're going to see all these little eyelets. Okay. And they come all the way around. All the way around. And that goes down into um, a just really sweet little stockinette. That's what it's going to be looking like. Just remember, your sweater is never gonna—it's never gonna look the way it's supposed to look until it's black. So then you bind off, you go into your yoke, you do your yoke. Excuse me. You bind off, and then basically you're going to take your your right sides of your sleeves. So this is a sleeve. Remember, I said we're going to be binding off on rows to make our gap for our sleeve. This is why. We're going to take our sleeve and we're going to go with the right sides facing together. This is the sleeve. You're going to put your right sides together like this. And that is your sleeve right there. You know, just let's pretend these are not there because they're going to be so new. So you're going to Face your right side to your right side. That's what I was trying to explain. When you seam off, you're going to use any stitch that works for you. You can do a whip stitch, a mattress stitch, a kitchen stitch. But I like to do an invisible stitch and you still can see it the way I do it because I'm not really good at it. But you're going to go from the inside stitch to the inside stitch to the outside stitch back over and crisscross like vertically so that it's on the inside you're picking up this stitch and then coming back for this stitch and then picking up the front loop that's a better way of explaining it and then picking up the back loop so you're not going like front loop to front loop front loop to front loop and making that big you're going like front loop to back loop back loop to front loop and it kind of interchanges and makes that little invisibleness there um, so you do that 
And then you can see here, here's where the gap is. Here's where those three stitches that we bound off were. We're going to go straight on down, stitching. You might have to reinforce it a little bit there because it gets a little wonky there. It really does. And then you take your side, which this is your, this is your front, to your sweater. You take your back, your back. You take your side of your back and your side of your sweater, right sides together, and sew all the way down. That's it. You do the same thing on the other side, and you turn it inside out. And then you're on the right side. What I would say also is fasten in all your edges before you black. And then if you have any any area that looks a little weak, maybe you knit uh, a split of a stitch instead of an actual full stitch, um, go ahead and, you know, really tug on this and make sure all your stitches are, you know, good and everything's, there's nothing running. Like, really, don't be afraid to get in there and pull it and look at it. And... Because you're going to block it anyways. Okay? If you see anything poking out anywhere that needs to go in on the other side, bring it to the wrong side. Bring it up to the wrong side. Any little fidgety looking things. Um, bring them to your wrong side. Let's, here's a good example here. This is the right side. And there's a little piece sticking up right here. And this is where I probably, excuse me, connected my yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this. Okay. And I'm going to pop it in between here. Bring it to the wrong side. This is the wrong side. And then when I get it over here, I'm going to find another little piece of yarn to go through. I don't want to make it too noticeable so I'm gonna like go into a little vertical piece of yarn. I'm just gonna kind of trap it in some fibers. Okay. Now if it was too big a piece you can take your embroidery needle and it's kind of called a cheater's knit stitch but if this really didn't go in if I couldn't get it to go in any way I would take an embroidery needle or large eye needle or whatever with your whatever, tack it right down. And even though it's called a cheater stitch, nobody's going to see, nobody's really looking on the inside of your sweater. Not so much. So, <laughs> so, you know, and here, here's another example where I'm going to, I am going to take a stitch here. This stitch right here just looks funky to me. Okay, now. Everybody can say, well, it's home crafted, it looks crafted, but right there, it just kind of, to me, it just looks a little weird. So I'm going to, I'm going to lift, where did it go? It looks so weird, I lost it. <laughs> it's right here. Here. It's just a little loose right there. There it is right there. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to take it down. Take it right there. And bring it through to the other side and fasten it off over here. Okay. So, I mean, you can go around and just kind of like, you know, fix it, fasten in all your edges, and then really all you need to do is decide where you want to put your button. And I, I have just already decided um, I'm going to make a uh, French knot button for this. I'm not going to... I don't know yet. <laughs> I so decided that I don't know yet. Um, now I haven't really decided if um, I yeah because I think hmm, part of it is really weird. I'm fiddling with the front of it. I might. I don't know, I might play with the front of it and do something different with the front of it. It just seems a little too... Yeah. 
Let me do something. Maybe it's too... Ah, okay. Okay. So, um, there, I am going to put the button right in the front there. Um, and I'm probably going to make the French nut button. And what you need to do there is just, um, if you wanted to crochet a button, um, you could do a single foundation crochet or a double foundation crochet chain. And then, um, work a popcorn stitch or even a shell stitch and um, single crochet around it into like a little flower bud. Let's see if I've got. Good. Let me show you. I'll show you with this. <laughs> and I want to use the contrasting yarn, so this might work out good. So let me just make it. And I'm just going to freeform make it. I don't really have a pattern for this. Just kind of make it up in my head. Um, I'm going to hopefully make a slip knot sometime tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can... I'm going to chain four. That's knitted. I mean, you could knit it too, but I'm going to crochet here. I'm going to go into this front stitch here. That first stitch. And drop a loop and slip stitch. Okay. And I'm going to chain four again. And I'm going to bring this down into here. And I'm going to connect it. With a slip stitch. And it doesn't take much to do this. I'm going to make a chain again. That is with my tail. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come over here for a minute. Make a chain with this one. And any old way works with this. It's really not, there's no rules. You're going to connect. You're making a knot, is what you're doing. But you're making a chain. You're just making. It's very, very simple. You're just making a set of chains. <laughs> then you just bring them back to the center and uh, connect them. Okay. And then, I hope I'm explaining this right. You really can't see with the color, I'm sure. The I used to make a lot of flowers with crocheting, so it's kind of the same idea. Um, you're just making chains, and then you're connecting them, and drawing them in, and connecting them. Okay. So you have like what looks like just a weird little fiddly thing here. Yeah, a little bud. It just looks like a little bud of flower there. Okay, let me do one more because I want to get the different color in it. One, two, three, four. I go this way. Yeah, so actually, I'm going to do a few more. I want to make this into a flower power button, so I am going to make a flower out of it. Hey, Vicki, I can't do this without making this for 
a little girl that I know her grandmother is such a flower child that I gotta make a flower. Okay, now there's no pattern for this. I'm just freeform doing it. So I'm just making this up right now as I'm going. But it will be fun. What I want to tell you about crochet and knitting is just do it. Don't, don't, I mean, is there anything I can tell you that I've learned? And I, I'm not an expert at this at all. It's just, don't, don't think you have to do it perfect to do it. Just get creating. Like that, that's how you get better is just by doing, just by doing. Okay, so I have this really cool little, except I have this sticking out there. Let me cut that. Okay, so now I have this really cool little flower petal happening. And basically all I did was made chains, went around, connected, made chains, went around, connected. Okay. So now what I'm thinking I'm going to do is make a chain of six. Okay. I'm going to bring that into the middle. I'm going to connect it. And I'm going to pull it through the middle, like this. I think, I think about how I'm going to go. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from one side to one side and connect that little space in the middle. And this will bring me around to the back now. Okay. Still have my little flower thing happening in there. And now I'm going to make a chain here. And I'm going to go down into the chain. Into the first chain space. Drop a loop, yarn over and draw through. And go into the second chain space. Drop a loop. And draw through. Go into the third chain space. Just loop and chain through. And that very last one. And draw through. Okay. Now I have this little tiny, tiny button. Which is going to look really, really cool. And then here, I'll show you what it will look like. It'll be right here. See? Little crocheted button. And it's a flower button. You don't have to do a flower button. If you don't want the petals, you could bring these down on themselves and tap them together and have just a little regular button. Okay, so do whatever your little heart desires. Make it your own. Have fun with it. I'm going to redo this. So I'm going to make it smaller. I'm probably going to use three chains instead of four. Um, and then just you know, do whatever you want to do. If you want to put a safety button on it, Safety snap. Don't want to put a button on. If you want to weave a eye cord through it, you could do that. But like I said, I don't like um, I don't like the cords and the buttons that babies and little toddlers can pull off because they can't pull them off and they do put them in their mouth. 
and you know, kids get tired, they fall asleep in car seats, they fall asleep when you set them down in their buggy, whatever. You know, so I don't know. I just don't like things around kids' necks, so I don't know. I mean, I think, I think my daughter just scared the living bajiggers out of me when she was little. And then my son did it too, so I mean, it's just a kid thing, but, um... I used to cut the grapes up, you know, because you know what, little kids, you don't give them hot dogs, you don't give them grapes. I would cut the grapes up, and as I was cutting up the grapes, she would be grabbing, like, not one, not two, not three. She would stuff her mouth with grapes, and she'd do the chipmunk thing. And I, my stepbrother used to do the chipmunk thing, and I knew that. It's like, oh no, this is not going to First time I babysit. All right, so what my stepbrother used to do was something we called him the chipmunk because he would put a spoon in his mouth and he would just stuff it into his mouth and just be like this. And I mean, we'd be like, okay, chew, swallow, chew, swallow. He would just stuff it all in his mouth. Two, three years old, he would do that until he was about four. <sighs> and I would end up having to babysit for him. And every now and again, I would hear my other stepbrother, Maria, he's stuffing his mouth again. Make him spit it out. Huh. <laughs> um. Because kids, they just put everything in their freaking mouths. <laughs> my daughter used to put everything in her mouth. Everything. And my son, too. He'd put his Legos in his mouth and just be chewing on him. Hmm. I found a Lego. I'm going to chew on it. I'm going to drive you nuts. I'm going to have you have a heart attack running around trying to get the Lego out of my mouth, Mom. <laughs> oh, look. I have a shiny quarter. I'm going to swallow it. Honest to God. So I'm I'm a little bit my trust levels are low up with kids with buttons and bows and ribbons and <laughs> Okay, so that's my video. Um so all you're gonna do is then you're gonna put it into a little tub of water, whatever kind of soap you wanna use, baby friendly, kid friendly, you know, who dies now. Animals used to be no crazy stuff, right? Get a nice soap, gentle soap, hypoallergenic, no crazy stuff in it. And just wash, 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 and get this nice and soft. And then um, rinse, 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 rinse. Rain gently. Make sure you get your edges really good. Um, some people have blocking boards. I don't. Uh, a friend of mine just showed me something she uses, but she doesn't have a blacking board either. She actually uses terry cloth towels that are the weight of, like, if you've ever been to, like, a hotel with those terry cloth towels they give you, the nice fluffy ones, she has some big cushy terry cloth towels, and that works really good. So, I don't have terry cloth, but what I do is I use beach towels. I have, like, five beach towels that I keep separate. And I lay them out on my dining room table. And then on an 82 degree night like this, I'm going to lay it out. And, you know, just pin. If you've tacked all your little areas that you think look strange or weird, you fastened in all your edges, and you washed and, and wrung it, lay it out, Stretch out your areas that need to be stretched. Don't need to stretch this too much. I made a mistake with the first one I made and I overstretched it. Don't do that. You just have to um, let your little eyelet lace show. And the rest of it will be fine. It'll just dry fine. And then um, it's done. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will make um, this. That's how you end making it. I'm done.
Have a nice day. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Stay cool.